somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. <laughs> Over there is Diamond Dave Damone. This is the Appleton Oak. That's the answer. I'm Mason Quinn. Folks, today we are taking a look at Chernobyl. We are on episode three, open wide, O Earth. Now, this series has been absolutely incredible. I've, I'm not even going to sit here and try to describe it because it's been so good. And thank you to so many of you out there in the comments who were kind of giving us a little bit of insight. That's always appreciated. Mm -hmm. So with all that, I am ready to dive into this. I'm ready, willing, and able to get back into this show. It's been very traumatizing. Well, not traumatizing, but to see what happened to the MBS and just powerful. And it's been a really eye-opening. Yeah, I haven't seen this before um, in, in a different capacity, just kind of watching it casually at my house. I'm getting so much more out of this rewatch than I did the original time around, although, as Answer said, it's it's definitely hitting uh, much, much harder. So uh, I'm, I, I, I've said before, I'm not, I'm not really excited to watch this, but I'm anticipating it. So I know this is going to be another good one. Really looking forward to seeing what we got in store for us in Episode 3. The first two were... Incredibly done by Mason and his team. Well done for the actors as well. Gosh, thank you for recommending it. Thank you for the comments. Let's go! Oh, it's the old wind-up flashlight. Oh, yeah. Those must have been extra ones they had because yeah, oh, the, the batteries uh, got so... We got so much radiation, right? Yeah. That they pretty much don't work, so... Now, what a visual, having just the light of that one flashlight. Oh, yeah, and the composer of this is Hilder. How did I for not even give her any praise she did the score for joker yep this and she does the score for this it's phenomenal i'm glad some folks caught what i did with the intro music yeah there were some the folks joker in the music. comments on that yeah is it possible that the water has already killed them yes well he has that answer oh thing is just going crazy in that water oh just oh man man i can't help it i this is like chills man i'm surprised they're trying to get that close to him Uh, I'm here to see my husband, Vasily Ignatenko. He's a firefighter from Chernobyl. I have permission. Chernobyl? I'm sorry, no visitors. Well, but Major Major Borov told me. He said... No exceptions. Please, I've come all the way from Kievsky Oblast. Not going to lie, Negan ruined that for me when every time I hear that. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. She's giving her some cash, or what is that? Must be... Grease the wheels. That work quickly, huh? I have a pass. You can't be here. It's not safe. I am here to see my husband, Vasily Ignatenko. He's a firefighter from Chernobyl. I know who Ignatenko is, but you can't. I have permission. I, I've... You can see him for 30 minutes. Not a minute more. And you cannot touch him in any way. Do you understand? <sighs> You're not oh. pregnant, are you? No. Uh... uh... Well, we don't know. Uh, we're ninety nine percent sure. Yeah, yeah we're, we are ninety nine percent sure. <laughs> but oh wait, wait, wait! I haven't finished yet. Oh, oh my shit. god! Look at his face. Look who the cat tracked in. What did I tell you? There's no hiding from you, is there? <laughs> don't, don't. Ah, I can't do that. Okay. Oh, they're even highlighting and touching. Yep, oh. uh, with the light. Oh, the music too just makes it uh, extra. Don't touch. Oh my gosh, I, I can't. Well, you would hope that they've 
washed most of the radioactive material off of him. He's still infected. It's not like those what Dawn this, oil though? commercials. Yeah, you just don't wash. Well, no, some folks in the comments were saying that it didn't matter because as long as you wash the fallout off, like you're still taking the damage. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what some of the folks in the comments were saying. Got a piece of his chest was out of the suit. Yeah. We have visual confirmation that the fire is nearly extinguished. There's also been reduction in iodine 131 and cesium 137 emissions. Good. Yes? But the temperature is rising, and, uh... And, uh... It was the end. And, uh... Like in Zirconium 925. That's from the cladding on the fuel rods. Meaning what? A meltdown has begun. Oh. This is Pripia. I'm just showing all the empty. Mm. Oh, it's gotten worse. You can't be in here. <laughs> She was touching him, dude. Mm. May second, so we want a couple more days. The concrete pad will last for six to eight weeks, but after that, Nagasov estimates a 50% chance that the fuel will breach the pad and melt down into the groundwater itself. And where does this groundwater go? The Pripyat River, which feeds into the Dnieper. The primary water supply for Approximately 50 million people. We're recommending we install a heat exchanger under the pad to lower the core temperature and halt the meltdown. And in order to do that, I'm told that we will need all of the liquid nitrogen in the Soviet Union. Wow. All of it. Anything else? Uh, no, no, no. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to address the 30 kilometer exclusion zone. Wait, wait, wait. Professor Legasov, is that you? W what exclusion zone? Minor details, General Secretary. Um, Premier Rishkov has, has determined that. If he determined, then he determined. Look, Professor Legasov, you are there for one reason only. Do you understand? Uh, I want to know when this will be over. If you mean when will Chernobyl be completely safe, the half-life of plutonium-239 is 24,000 years, so perhaps we should just say <laughs> oh. not within our lifetimes. <laughs> Tell him how it is. Line clicks. Line click. Unbelievable. Hey, we only kind of want to listen to you. Yeah. yeah. What will happen to our boys? Which boys? Divers. Divers, the firefighters, the men in the control room. What does the radiation do to them? I don't know. Some of them were exposed. Ionizing radiation tears the cellular structure apart. Skin blisters, turns red, then black. This is followed by a latency period. A firefighter. The patient appears to be recovering. Healthy, even. But they aren't. Mm -hmm. The bone marrow dies. The immune system fails. The organs and soft tissue begin to decompose. The arteries and veins spill open like sieves. To the point where you can't even administer morphine for the pain, which is unimaginable. Oh, the worst way to go. Three days to ever. three weeks, you're dead. Three weeks of that. And what about us? They've gotten a steady dose, but not as much of it. Not strong enough to kill the cells, but consistent enough to damage our DNA. So, in time, cancer or aplastic anemia. Either way, fatal. In a sense, it would seem we've got enough easy then. That would explain the first episode. He opted out. Well, he was coughing up blood too mm -hmm. with the handkerchief. <sighs> I've seen them before. My bar, yeah, I was just gonna say. Now you know why I wanted to take a walk. You can presume the work site is bugged. And our rooms, mm. even our bathrooms. They've been here the whole time. Of course they've been here the whole time. But if we're seeing them out in the open now, it's because they want us to know. Jesus Christ. Wow. This is 
Something else, man. Why did it explode? I've worked the numbers over and over, presuming the worst possible conditions in an RBMK reactor. And I always get the same answer. Which is? It's not possible. Which is yeah. why Dietloff, in his yeah. defense, and the other guys just kept saying it's not possible. Yeah. Here's why, here's one. What's as big as a house? Barns 20 liters of fuel every hour. Puts out a shitload of smoke and noise. And cuts an apple into three pieces. A Soviet machine made to cut apples into four pieces! <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little bit of levity there. <laughs> Our antagonist from Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> this guy. Who's in charge here? I'm right? the crew chief. I'm Shadov, Minister of Coal Industries. We know who you are. How many men do you have? On this shift, 45 here. 100 in total. I need all 100 men to gather their equipment and get on the trucks. Do you? To where? That's classified. Oh. He's got his finger on the trigger, too. Yeah. Take it easy there, Skippy. Start shooting. You haven't got enough bullets for all of us. Uh, 60. And whoever's left, they'll beat the living piss out of each of you. You can't talk to us like that. Shut the f up. <laughs> <laughs> this is our mine. We don't leave unless we know why. You're going to Chernobyl. Oh. We dig up coal, not bodies. The reactor fuel is going to sink into the ground and poison the water from Kiev to the Black Sea. All of it. Forever, they say. They want you to stop that from happening. How are we supposed to do that? They didn't tell me, because I don't need to know. Do you need to know, or have you heard enough? Wow. I ruined that suit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Good. Now you look like the Minister of Coal. <laughs> Compared to what these men are going to get, yeah. he got it pretty easy. Oof. Oh, no. She's right yeah. there. That's it. You almost wonder if they're going to give these guys the option. Oh, my God. Oh, she just. Uh. God. They touch you. I can't. Safe for them and safe for me. It's not. But I can Oh, man. Oh. Ooh. Uh, you think anything that touches its, his skin would just, uh, just hurt so me. bad? I told you I'd show you Moscow, didn't I? Uh -huh. Yes. Well, sometimes that's the best thing you can do. So she was only supposed to be in there for 30 minutes. Yeah, and she's... It's been a couple of days, I would think. I'm not a nurse, Comrade Dyatlov. I'm a nuclear physicist. Well then, Comrade Nuclear Physicist, unless you happen to have a butter and caviar sandwich on you, you can get the f*** out of my room. Jesus. Oof, they're bringing them right up to it. Right up to it. Have you ever spent time with miners? No. My advice, tell the truth. These men work in the dark and see everything. Oh, wow, what a line that is. Yeah. Do these work? To an extent. Of course. <laughs> well, I'd let them keep them too. We need to install a liquid nitrogen heat exchanger underneath this concrete pad. There's no way to approach from the interior of the building, so you have to get at it from underground. And what's above the pad? The core of the nuclear reactor, which is melting down. What, like? <laughs> I need more men, 400 at least. We'll have to work around the clock. How deep do you want this tunnel, six meters? 12. Twelve. Why? For your protection. At that depth, you'll be shielded from much of the radiation. The entrance to the tunnel won't be 12 meters below ground. No. And we're not 12 meters below ground, no. 
No. We're not. We have some equipment near our side. More will arrive by midnight. We can start in the morning. No. We start now. I don't want my men here one more second than they need to be. If these worked, you'd be wearing them. That guy's no bullshit. Mm -hmm. No. They all like that. They're all like that. Gosh. It's, yeah, I think anybody who's image. worked in a manufacturing facility knows guys like that and how they work with management. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All by hand. Yep. And they got to put in those arches. Yep, all by hand as well. 24-7. Gotta say, Craig Mason and crew are just crushing it with these shots. Mm -hmm. None of them are wearing their masks at all. No. You're pretty much infected either way, so. What's up, to? These guys can dig. We need fans. For what purpose? What do you mean for what purpose? They think you're a tunnel, that's why. Who's talking to you? Oh, comrades. It's 50 degrees in there. We can't breathe without the masks. We can't breathe with the masks. We need ventilation. Fans will put dust in the air. The dust will go in your lungs. I've been breathing dust in my lungs for 20 years. Not this dust. I'm sorry. But you're all good. No fans. Wow. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. My name is Olano Homiok. I'm a nuclear physicist with the Chernobyl Commission. I want you to tell me everything that happened on the night of the accident. Is that all right? Yes, I want to tell. God, as far as PPE goes, that mask is. My name is Leon Fedorovich Toptonov. I am the senior reactor. Control Chief Engineer at Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant. Senior Engineer, how old are you? I'm 25. Oh. Is he dying? Or is she well, she's questioning oh. why he was the senior engineer at 25. Blood just went out his nose. Yeah. Yeah, you're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm... Oh my god. Oh my god, man. Everything's just turning black. That's what he said would happen. Yep. It isn't safe for you. Who's my husband? Not anymore. He's something else now. Do you understand? He's dangerous to you. He's burned. Go home. He's not just burned. Stay on the other side of the plastic. Or I'll have you removed by security. I mean, the amount of suffering that this guy and everybody else is in is, is just unthinkable. No, she's not going to stay on that side of the plastic. I'm, I'm thinking she's got other plans. Oh, sir. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh my God. Oh. 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 I didn't see this part. Oh, my God. We're going to have a baby. Well, we were... We pretty much knew that, yeah. Oh. No. No, come on. Poor baby. The miners are making incredible progress. They say the whole job will be finished in four weeks. Four weeks. Can't believe that. Is that going to be enough time now? Or does the fire yeah. going out mean the meltdown gets worse? That's the beginning of the end. That's the beginning of the beginning, dude. It is the minus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they're just Make working. It. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Boots and that's it. Yep. They wouldn't get with fans. It's too hot for clothes. So we're digging the old way. This is where our fathers might. We're still wearing hats. <laughs> <laughs> You're not as protected. Can you tell them they'll make a difference? When this is over, will they be looked after? I don't know. <sighs> He's telling them the truth, I guess, but damn. You don't know. I mean, can't you at least say that you're at minimum saving 50 million people? I, that's not <laughs> good enough either. Because if I was in that spot, I'd be like, yeah. Why didn't you initiate an emergency shutdown? Why didn't you press the AZ-5 button? I did. I reported the increase to Akimov. And he pressed the button. Leonid, that's, that's not possible. That's what everybody says. I swear. Doing. It's just too late. When it exploded. What? Which room is Akimov? 27. Do you have any idea what you're dealing with? Of course I do. Please, I do. No. People are going to hear about this. Wait. What is everyone going to hear? I'm with the official Chernobyl Commission. I've been authorized by Valery Lagasov. You can check this. My name is Ola. We know who you are. What is everyone going to hear? Oh, boy. <laughs> Guess we're led to believe that's the KGB listening in on everybody. Just like in the previous scene with Boris. Homiuk was arrested last night. Why? I don't know. Was it? Of course it was. There's no longer a threat of additional explosion. The Soviet people have faced the challenge and risen to the task, and they and everyone in this room are to be commended. Jesus fucking Christ. The immediate danger is over. Now I'm afraid a long war must begin. There is an enormous amount of radioactive debris and contamination spread out across a zone of approximately 2,600 square kilometers. This entire region must be completely evacuated. We must go to every town, every village to ensure this. <laughs> His face. Yeah. And finally, we will need to construct a containment structure around the power plant itself, which will, of course, still be extremely... There will be deaths. What amount of time? And how many men do you require? We expect this liquidation effort to take three years and approximately 750,000 men. <sighs> Holy mm -hmm. shit. My associate was, was arrested last night. Oh? I mean no disrespect, but I was wondering if you could tell me why. I'm sorry, I don't know who you're talking about. She was arrested by the KGB. You are the first deputy chairman of the KGB. I am. That's why I don't have to bother with arresting people anymore. But you are bothering with having us followed. You really don't trust us. Of course I do. But you know the old Russian proverb, trust but verify. And the Americans think that Ronald Reagan brought that up. Can you imagine? It was very nice speaking with him. I need help. Oh, he keeps pushing. And... Well, he's got to have her. I know he's got to have her. Why, you want this done? I mean... Then it's done. Her name? I know who she is. Good day, Professor. Oh, I thought you knew nothing about that. A lot of talking in circles. Yeah, he sure puts his neck out there, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. That went surprisingly well. <laughs> Fuck him off like a naive idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots are not a threat. All right. Well, because they need just... Well, and again, yeah. they have nothing to lose. Yeah. They're on borrowed time as it is. Do you think the fuel will actually melt through the concrete bag? I don't know, 40% chance, maybe. That's still high. <laughs> By the way, the numbers mean the same thing, maybe. Right. A maybe as good as it will. The problem has been assigned and you will stop at nothing until you find an answer. Because that is who you are. A lunatic, then. A scientist. 
Just to look. I guess like, that means we're free to go. Does she get her notes back then too, or no, I'm assuming she'll get all of her stuff. Did you know that they were running a safety test? They press days at five. Apparently not soon enough. A key move pressed AZ-5, and then the reactor exploded. If it had been just one of them, I would have put it down to faulty memory or delusion even, but they both agreed they were adamant. His face. Comrade. What, did they build the damn machine wrong? And they... We have to pursue every possibility, no matter how unlikely. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to the hospital and re-interview Akimo. I don't think you have time for that. On you. So are they thinking that it was built wrong and AZ-5 doesn't do what it was supposed to do? I don't know. I mean, that's all I can I don't know. piece So right that now, out. it's all because of a safety test, but what Something went wrong during the safety yeah, test? Yeah, something went wrong in the systems where it didn't act the way it was well, supposed to. And the one guy is not even talking, so he maybe he yeah. did something wrong too, so he's not going to say that he did it. Well, that the way the very well be too. yeah. Well, and the way the miners Irish were talking or? about you know Soviet equipment being garbage, you know who knows. Oh, is this what they all have to give all everyone? The evacuations. Oh no, these are all the part of the seven hundred and fifty thousand men they're going to need. Is that oh, Barry? Yeah, that yeah, is. it's Barry. Wow. Ah. Oh. Oh. Yep. She's not looking too hot either, but then again, she probably hasn't had much sleep. Guessing those are made out of lead. I wonder if any of those were actual photos or if they mm -hmm. used all the actors' photos. Wow, yeah. they are going Concrete, on. yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Boy, they know how to end them. Wow. Yeah, Jared Harris is... Everybody has been... Yeah, everybody definitely brought their A game out of this one, <coughs> folks. Lee Watson, all of them. Yeah, this has to be one of the most, if not the most incredible series that, that I've ever seen. Especially, I mean, I guess I'll call it a miniseries. I mean, we're only on the, the third episode here. And, you know, given that it was, you know, a five episode run, uh, just really incredible. Again, you know, I, I know we said this on the last one, but I feel it's important enough to say that, you know, there's a lot of history out there that people only know the just the surface about of, of what happened and there's there's so many stories out there throughout history you know major events whatever it might be and you know every now and then they do get made into movies and tv shows and that sort of thing and it's you know it's a way for people to find out we've done a number of them on this channel that were incredibly powerful and this is no exception this has been just an incredible ride the the actors the score everything has been incredible the you know the just how the whole world was just hanging in the balance here and it was up to just regular people to come in and, and save the day i mean and when i say regular people i mean you know the miners the nurses and doctors and everybody who was there the pilots the amount of work that has to be done i mean they need seven hundred and fifty thousand men over three years uh to accomplish this task to make it safe and as far as i know i think think and i could be wrong here you guys might have to correct me but i think they just recently got the concrete dome over the chernobyl reactor like within the last couple of years it just finally got done and so now that that area is i'm not gonna say it's safe from what i know but uh there have been people who have gone in there and filmed things and that sort of thing uh so they they have been able to go there and to see the way it is now uh we've been able to see that a little bit but to learn the backstory about it, about all the individuals, the just the, the sheer amount of suffering that that you know the firefighters, for just for an example, just that we saw in this episode, what they had to go through, and you know when his wife was coming in there and she was going through the plastic, part of me was almost thinking, 
is she going to give him away out of this suffering? Oh. Because the way it was described, it was like, yeah, it's incredibly painful. Your entire body is essentially burning and shutting down. There's no cure for it. You're essentially going to die slowly in incredibly excruciating pain. And I was just wondering if maybe she was going to take that step of like, look, there's what's the point of, of sitting there and, and suffering and, and living out your last couple of days like this? So I thought maybe she was going to go that route and kind of give him uh, an escape from all of that, but that wasn't the case. And, you know, now we have, even most of us have kind of a rudimentary knowledge of radioactivity and nuclear power plants and so many things have been in the news and you know, I think a lot more is obviously taught in schools and even a layman understands the danger that so many of these people are in and they don't. They don't even really know what they're dealing with. We saw that in the first couple episodes with all the fallout was coming through the wind and the, the kids were playing in it and stuff like that and nobody really knew what it was. So just an absolutely powerful series that I, I don't know if it can be matched for the just how much it sucks you in and and again i don't know if it's because we're wearing headphones and we're hyper focused the way we are but you feel like you're there yeah. you feel like you're with the characters going through uh what they're going through you, you you feel like you're in those situations with them and uh it's it's just incredible just just a powerhouse of a series well like uh Lewin Mila, is that how you say her name the where is her firefighter that husband that was like he wanted to like yell at her for doing what she's doing, but at the same time, you know, look what she's going through and what she only knows. And then, and we like, we had an inclination that she might be pregnant. And then yeah, Plato was told she so. is pregnant and like, she's in there. Cause she, you know, like she even said, she didn't want him to, to pass away alone. She wanted to be there for him till his last breath. And she was. And then you, you saw the real powerful moment that that must have been all the firefighters and their families. Mm -hmm. They get put in the wooden box. Then we're assuming, like but, you said, lead. Nope. It's welded shut. And then it's getting buried in concrete and just that tight shot on her face. And it was just gut-wrenching. And it, yeah, like we do feel like we were there and it's because what they went through. And then even when he was saying about the miners, he's like, they work in the dark, they see everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so when they were getting hot and couldn't get fans because, hey, the air could get contaminated, he saw right through that, like, hey, the, we're still getting contaminated one way or another. Mm -hmm. So then they just were like, well, we have to be able to do it and do it in a timely amount of time. So then they went to, as you saw, being fully nude. And I mean, they kept the hats on, but that was it. Well. They want to get the job done and get it done right and get it done in a timely manner to save as many people as they can. And then even more off powerful was at the beginning, having the wherewithal that they probably did if, if that was a true event, having the, the hand flashlights that he do that because obviously the batteries, they're going to go kaput in that radioactivity. So they came out like cheering and it's like you're cheering not for yourself at yeah. that point. You're saying, yeah, we did it, but you know that you could possibly be saving a whole lot more people and so like this whole thing has just been really eye-opening really powerful uh, it's yep. they have done a great job with the music the actors have done amazing uh jared harris has been crushing this role but they have really done a good job telling the story the storytelling has been done i thought perfectly yeah because we haven't seen what happened to the three gentlemen that went inside and actually got the water flowing uh, and the tanks and all. i mean we didn't see what, i mean we obviously we we have an idea we have an idea long, because but. remember the gentlemen that like were running the safety tests they were down in that water turning everything yep. now they didn't have as much protection as those three right but they're still down in there and yeah they weren't looking good either and like the firefighters have some protection and they're all pretty much yeah, a matter of days yeah, so with, again, th this whole, I, I'm not going to stop saying this probably, but another chilling episode, mm -hmm. the <laughs> the shots of the bodies that they're showing as the progression to basically their, their end was incredibly well done. I, it's, I think some, uh, some people have said it best, it's, it's like that car wreck you just can't look away kind of thing and man were they nailing the prosthetics and everything on what the body would most likely do in these situations i mean you feel for the wife 
but at the same time, it's kind of like, I mean, I 100% understand her emotions in what yeah. she's, you know, wanting to do. But when you keep hearing, you know, that stay away, you know, don't touch, and then they're yeah. touching, and I get it, the the human emotion is yeah, going to be taken. She never really over. got an explanation. Nobody's telling him. Anything. Right. No one's going into further yeah. explanation. Yeah. It, it, again, from the me sitting here, yeah, seeing the what they're showing me, it's it, it, like you probably saw it. I recoiled a couple times just because of the situation, knowing a little bit about it, uh, like what that radiation and everything can kind of do to you. The story with uh, Emily Watson, I'm butchering their names, uh, their character names, so that's why I'm going with the real names. Uh, you know, her finding out that it was testing, that's at least what she's hanging it on a little bit here, that in the testing stages, when he hit that button, that's when the explosion happened. Mm -hmm. So, like, that little detail I didn't know too much of, or if I did, I definitely do not remember it. So just... I can't wait to see what they're going to give us more on that information because obviously they left off. We need more and explore every possibility, uh, as Jared Harris's character was saying, which I, it was refreshing to hear finally in here. We can't, even if it's un, un, uh, an unlikable scenario, explore it. So it was great to finally kind of see, hey, we need any and every stone. Don't leave it unturned. Investigate it. Make sure we rule it out as basically no possibility on that and then we'll get our answer so uh the minor scene that was actually pretty crazy too i guess i never would have thought they would just strip down and go to work yeah. uh hearing them uh say hearing the leader of the miners hear him say i don't know like man i get his face basically said it all and it's these actors have done such a great job with the writing by craig that even a lot, half of this is, you, we probably wouldn't even need dialogue. They could just tell us with their face. That's how awesome all these actors are doing with that. So again, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next episode, but damn, is this heartbreaking on some of this stuff. And just to think all of it happened because of what they told me here so far is probably testing yeah and the last thing i want to hit on is just because i wrote it down and you reminded me uh dave was you know they they uh emily keeps hitting on the az5 and the miners before the ministry of coal whatever it was came to see them they were telling that joke of oh you want to know what burns you know a thousand liters of diesel an hour and you know is big and overbuilt and is made to cut an apple into three pieces, a Russian machine that's made to cut an apple into four pieces. So they didn't put that joke in there for no reason. They they said that for a purpose to kind of explain to you the way things were built and the way things worked under communism, the way that things were constructed and built. They didn't work very well, didn't have the best technology. That leads me to believe that the AZ-5 button, and this is, I, I don't know the story, I'm just guessing, but I think the AZ-5 button, something was built wrong in the reactor and it didn't do what it was supposed to do. That's my my early guess here uh, with just what they've given us. Yeah, I mean, having, having seen this, you know, when it came out, which was, you know, going on five years um <clears throat> i uh i didn't i didn't um i don't remember because it's not shit you forget i didn't see some of the scenes with uh with the burns on the skin um you know when you watch shows and movies at home you step out of the room use the bathroom take a phone call mailman comes whatever um it was hard to see i mean you understand his prosthetics for a show and the thing is, for as, this is the way I think, for as bad as it was to see the prosthetics, I can only imagine it was it was drastically worse in, in real life. And to, to know that somebody went through that, I mean, you know, third degree burns are one thing, but, um, you know, and obviously superficially a third degree burn over your entire body looks really bad, but this, you know, like they were saying, it's organ failure, it's your, inside your wounds out. aren't healing, you can't wrap, everything's coming from inside out. I mean, that's, that's tough to watch. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting, you know, we've watched a handful of movies based on true stories, you know, not too long ago, we did a movie, The Impossible, about the tsunami. Um, 
2004, I believe. And, you know, we talked about like, look for the helpers, look for the helpers. When bad things happen, look for the helpers. And so often when we talk about that, we're talking about natural disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, you know, massive floods, you know, things like that. And so to see something where the problem was the error of, you know, as Mason Quinn brought up, could have been a, you know, an engineering or construction error or what have you, but human error, but the result is still the same with like all these people. I mean, these guys that were minors, you know, all he needed to know was that they were saving, you know, potentially thousands and millions of lives. Every single one of those guys knows that they're going to be sick there and they go and they do it. And it's just like you have, there's just these, this polar opposite of mindset where you have the, the Soviet government officials where it's so the state, the state, the state, and then you have just these incredibly brave and selfless people that are going there <clears throat> knowing that their actions could save so many lives and I mean, you're talking about nuclear waste or whatever, radioactive groundwater. I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, to see the, 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 the miners, and I, I'm guessing, you know, they're not going to dramatize the fact that a, a heat exchanger needed to be built underneath and that the miners came there, whether they were doing things nude or, or not is, is irrelevant. I mean, obviously it speaks to their determination and how hot it was, but the fact that there was men willing to go there and doing that, knowing that they were all going to be very sick. I mean, even the fact that he says, are they going to be taken care of? They knew what they were getting into the masks, you know, the, 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 the actions of the government and the bravery of the people, there's such a, you know, such a gap there. It's, it's hard to wrap your head around, but I just, I just can't get over the bravery of the, the three men who went in the miners and everybody that was there. I mean, you'd want to just pack up and go right and then obviously I'm, I'm sure I, should, I shouldn't say i know but i'm guessing if you were a military or government official and you just left in russia in the 80s it's not a good outcome um but the bravery is just next level as far as um Ludmia, uh, ludmilla staying with her husband um yeah, you know, she didn't want him to pass alone. It was funny, I didn't even think about it until Mason Quinn said, you know, he thought, and then I'm like, yeah, I wonder if, you know, you'd, you'd wonder if you were in that same situation, if you'd just do the, you know, the pillow over the head and, and kind of end it type thing. Um, as far as not wanting him to die alone, I mean, I, you know, I watched this when it came out in 2019. Um, my dad passed in the summer of 2021, and the reason that I bring that up is during that time, the hospital had COVID protocol, and there was only... A, two people allowed in the room at, the, at one time so he went in on a <clears throat> on a Sunday and um, you know the first few days he was there he he fell and had massive brain trauma and you know originally they had him on some breathing tubes and then full life support and then he was taken off but during the time period the first few days he was there um, they were only allowing two people in the room um, at 7 p.m. On a, on a Tuesday, we made the decision to take him off life support. And uh, so the nurses were like, well, we're only supposed to have two people in the room. And and I have a, the utmost respect for the nurses at the hospital and the care that they took care of my dad was, was unbelievable. But we just said, like, we're not leaving, you know. And the nurses kind of just said, like, Okay, there was, I should explain, there's the four, I have two brothers and a sister, so there was four of us. Um, his brothers and sisters came and, and said their goodbyes and stuff, and there was, there was the four of us, and they, the rule was, this was a hospital rule, this wasn't a nurse rule, um, no more than two people in the room, and there was the four of us, and, and we wanted to be there for my dad when he passed, and so... I drove to Walmart and got air mattresses and they only had one chair you could sleep in. So my sister slept in a, a reclining chair and my brothers and I slept in air mattresses on the floor. But I guess the reason that I bring it up is I, I've been through that. You don't want somebody to die alone. And, you know, my dad wouldn't have been alone. He would have been with at least two of us, but that's, that's not what we wanted. So I can't, you know, knowing what his situation, he was out of pain at that point um so it's not even a comparable situation but i just i look at all these people that died in the hospital like that 
And obviously, I, I have no way of knowing, none of us have any way of knowing how many people got to be with their significant others, but they made it seem like not a lot. And so there's a lot of family members that had to live after this whole situation, knowing that their loved ones died alone in a hospital in extreme pain. And, and that hits hard. And, and, you know, it's a drastically different situation. Obviously, my brothers and my sister and I weren't in any sort of, you know, risk for, you know, you know, developing any sickness. Certainly, you know, nobody was pregnant. Um, so I've, it's a different situation, but there's still that not wanting your loved one to die alone and putting yourself at risk. Obviously, in this case, putting the child at risk. I don't think she knew the extent of the risk. Um, I think that's worth being said because I think, you know, yeah, she didn't. Yeah, had they known the extent of the risk, I mean, that changes things when you when you're pregnant. Even if you don't want your loved one to be alone, and look now, knowing what you know, I look if the roles were reversed you know i would be the one telling the hospital staff you make sure she stays away from me um but yeah the whole the whole not wanting your loved one to die alone that uh that hits home pretty hard and this was obviously before that happened so this particular episode kind of hit harder than i was expecting it to but um another another it, it's so hard to like react to this right like as reactors we we do a lot of shows that have heavy undertones and we've watched some you know based on true story shows but i don't know if we've watched anything you know quite this heavy where real people are involved we did watch sardar udam which was which was obviously very difficult as well and then and i would kind of put this on the same level as far as um as far as how hard it is to watch but um the way that this show is done um the writers, the actors, the people doing the music, I mean, everything. I, I know it's a true story and and sometimes it's hard to, you know, even as reactors, it's hard to be like, oh, wow, you know, they did such a great job with the score, you know, and you're like, these are like people's real fucking lives, you know, and you're talking about the score and the writing, but at the same time, you have to respect the storytelling and I think uh, well, it's I kind of incumbent some, right? Because I, they're delivering a story, but there's a lot of people that put their work in. And I know you're not bad. No, no. In fact, but, I was going. In fact, I was going the other. I was going the other route. What I was gonna say is, is that it's hard to sit here and say the score and this and that. But I envision the people working on this saying, "Hey, guys, this is." we're telling a heavy heavy story we have to nail it yep. so mm -hmm. I, if if when i started kind of that 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 piece it sounded like i was like oh you know we can't talk about the score it's just i have to imagine the writer craig, craig mazin mm -hmm. uh, the person doing the score was like look i now have the opportunity to tell this story it's on my shoulders to make sure i do this story do these people who pass do the heroes um do them right and, and just put everything we have and so I think collectively that's why we talk about the score I don't want it to come across and I know these guys don't die they're like we're being crass like oh wow it's a great score you know um, but I think the people who worked on this project knew the gravity of, of what they were putting it out there and they put everything into this and they absolutely nailed it and the, the storytelling is just so powerful and part of that is the writing the shots, the score, the the way they leave the end of each episode. I just, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough about this show. Yeah, I mean, everything means something that they do. There's, there's nothing done for no reason. Uh, that's just thrown in there. You know, when you have something that's this, it, trying to be historically accurate and the way that things are done. And yeah, Craig's not just gonna put something in there for no reason which no, again leads no, no, it, I, you, just, you know there's a lot of clues zero in fat there, on the bones are, are dropped or, in there so. i think the level yeah. of respect that we have to have for the people who put this together is just is just such an amazing job and, and what what a show of respect to the families and the people who went through this by the people who created this show so yeah well, there we are. We're three episodes done of this powerful series, mini series uh, brought to us by HBO. So for Diamond Dave, Appleton Oak, that's basically I'm, of course, the answer. We'll catch you on the next one, pals.